In this video, we're going to explore how we can determine an empirical or a molecular formula from experimental data. There are two main ways that we can do this, and one involves percent composition data and the other involves elemental analysis. So the things that we just learned about uh, percent composition and elemental analysis, both of these can be used to not only determine the percent of each element inside of a compound, but it can also be used to actually come up with the molecular formula that um, tells you the number of atoms that are there and what atoms are there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to discuss quickly the, what an empirical formula is versus a molecular formula. And we know, we know what a molecular formula is from previous videos. So let's do a little bit of a comparison. We have the molecular formula, which is C6H12O6. And so the empirical formula, uh, I'm sorry, so the molecular formula for glucose tells us two things. It tells us the atoms that are present and the precise number of atoms that are present. So we have the atoms present and we have the exact number of atoms. So that's the molecular formula and this has an associated molecular weight with it which in this case is equal to 180.2 grams per mole. The empirical formula for glucose is CH2O. So we do get the information about the atoms that are present but in this case, what's different is that instead of getting the exact number of atoms that are present, we get the ratios of atoms that are present. So you'll notice in the empirical formula that we have a ratio of hydrogen that's uh, 2 to 1 with respect to carbon and 2 to 1 with respect to oxygen. So there's twice as many hydrogens as there are oxygens, and there are twice as many hydrogens as there are carbon atoms. So that's what the empirical formula tells us, what atoms are present and what ratio the atoms are in. Now to go from one to the other, what we have to do is we have to multiply by a factor. And in this case, if we want to convert the empirical formula to a molecular formula, we would multiply by a factor of six. So we would take the carbon, we would multiply the carbon has a little subscript of one, we would multiply that by six, that would give us C6. The hydrogen, we would multiply that by six. Six times two would be 12, and O would be six times one is, is O6. So that's the, what the empirical formula is versus the molecular formula. And we can define an empirical formula weight. Uh, and in this case, if we add this up, 12 plus two plus 16 would be 30 grams per mole, approximately. So that, that shows you, that, that gives us an introduction to what the empirical formula is versus the molecular formula. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why do we care about the empirical formula? And really, the reason why we care about the empirical formula is when we get the data, the first thing that we're gonna be able to get is the empirical formula. So when we have the, the most basic data, um, when we have the percent composition or elemental analysis, from that data we're going to be able to determine the ratio of the atoms that are present. So we're going to get a, an empirical formula first. And then we're going to be able to compute the molecular formula, but we need to know one extra piece of information. We need to know what the molecular weight is. And I'll, we'll, we'll go over this entire process in just a few seconds. So in discussion problem three, uh, this, this is going to be one where we have a unknown compound and we're given percent composition data where they tell us uh, we have 68.8% carbon, 5% hydrogen, and the rest is oxygen. Using this data, determine the empirical formula. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do this in a few different steps. So the first thing we have to do to get an empirical formula, and in this case, um, this, this compound has C, H, and O. So there's going to be C, X, H, Y, O, Z. So our job is to figure out what are the ratios between the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now to, to get the ratios, what you have to do is we're going to have to get the number of moles, right, of each one. Because if we have the number of moles of each one, then we can figure out, well, let's start to compare. So if we have one mole of carbon and we have two moles of hydrogen, I know that my ratio of carbon to hydrogen is going to be one to two. Um, and the same thing for oxygen. If I have um, a ratio of one to four uh, relative of carbon to oxygen, then I know that I have um, four times as many oxygens as I have carbon. So that's why we need to get to the number of moles. In, in any empirical formula determination, the first step, step one, 
is to calculate the number of moles. of each element in the compound. Now for percent composition data, there's gonna be one trick that you can do that's gonna be able to help you out. We're gonna assume that we have 100 grams. This is for percent composition data specifically. So let's try this out and let me show you why we do out of 100%. The reason for this is because if we assume that we have 100 grams of sample and there is 68.8% carbon, well, if we take the 100 grams and we multiply it by the fraction of carbon, which is 68.8 uh, or 0.688 is the fraction, we can get immediately to the number of grams and essentially we can just take the percent in grams. So that 68.8% becomes 68.8 grams. So that makes life a lot easier when you assume 100%. We can do the same thing for hydrogen. We can take our 100 grams and multiply that by 0 0.050, which is 5%, uh, and we get 5.0 grams. Now here's the challenging, here's one of the challenges that we have to face. So the, now that we have carbon and hydrogen, we don't have any information about oxygen. What do we do? If you remember from elemental analysis, we had this the same exact problem. We could get hydrogen, we could get carbon, we could get hydrogen, but we couldn't get the oxygen because when you do flame combustion, the oxygen comes from both the compound and the atmosphere. So we have to set up our equation where we know that the percent of carbon plus the percent of hydrogen plus the percent of oxygen has to equal 100%. So if we take our 68.8% of the carbon plus our 5.0% of the hydrogen plus the percent oxygen is equal to 100, we can calculate that the percent of oxygen is 26.2%. So we get 26.2 grams of oxygen. So that's an important thing to remember. You can always get the third. If you're not given data about the third element or about an element, typically the way you can get it is through that conservation of mass consideration. So now that we have the masses, we, gotta, we have to go to moles. So the next step is we divide each one by the, molecule, the atomic mass of that element. So we divide the carbon by 12.01 grams for every one mole of carbon. This is going to give us uh, 5.73 moles of carbon. And here we're going to get, um, we're going to do 5.0 grams uh, divided by 1.008 grams of hydrogen for every one mole. This is going to give us 4.96 moles of hydrogen. And finally, we're going to do 16.0 gram grams. This is going to give us 1.64 moles of oxygen. Okay, so that concludes the first step. We've gotten our moles. The next step is going to be to figure out what the ratios between these numbers of moles are. So in the second step of this process, we're going to figure out the ratios, and we're going to, div we're going to do that by dividing by the element that has the least number of moles. So step two is we're going to divide each... of the uh, mole amounts by the element with the smallest number of moles. Now the reason why we do this uh, by the smallest number of moles is because the one with the smallest number of moles is going to typically be the one, right? <clears throat> so if you have C6 uh, if you have CH2O, the C and the O are going to have the least number of moles in that process. So to figure out which one has the least number of moles, we're going to take the, the smallest one and divide each one by that. And then that way we know that this one is going to give us a 1. This one, if we divide 4.96 divided by 1.64, we're going to get the ratio here. This one gives us a ratio of... 3.02 and then if we do this one and divide it by 1.64 moles we get a ratio of 3.49 so now we know that for every one oxygen we have about three times as many hydrogens and we have about 3.5 times as many carbons
So we're getting in the right direction. We, we, we're getting closer to our empirical formula. But we can't have a fraction. So we can't have something like 3.5. That's not going to work. We don't, in our empirical formulas, they have to be whole numbers. Now, one thing you'll notice is that because this is an experiment, it's never going to be 100% perfect. So it's not going to be exactly 3.00, and it may not be exactly 3.5. But within an experimental error, you should get round numbers. So in step three, if you get fractions, Uh, like, for example, 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.33, uh, 0 0.25. Multiply each by a factor to get a whole number. So what do I mean by that? Well, we can't, we could write, for example, we could write C 3.5, H 3.0, and... O, 1. We could write that, but that's actually not proper. We can't have a 3.5 because the empirical formula is a ratio of atoms, so and you, you can't have a half of an atom. So the way that we'll clean this up is if we multiply each one of these by 2, we'll get a nice clean empirical formula. So in this case, this is going to give us 7, 6, and 2. So what we're going to get for our empirical formula is C7, H6, O2. So those are the three steps. Uh, step number one, you calculate the number of moles of each element. Step number two, you divide each of the mole amounts by the element with the smallest number of moles. That gives you your ratios. And then if you have to clean it up um, to get whole numbers, you can multiply all of them by a single, uh, a single multiplier to get through to a set of to a set of ratios that are whole numbers. So for example, for 0.5, you would multiply by 2. For 0.33, you would multiply by 3. For 0.25, you would multiply by 4. Uh, sometimes you will just get a perfectly even set. Like you could get 3, 3, and 1, in which case you don't have to multiply by anything. So step 3 is kind of optional, depending on what you get. One other thing that I want to mention is if for some reason you don't get something that's uh, a, a whole number like 3 or 3.5, 3.33 or 3.25, you probably did something wrong and you have to go back. We're not going to give you really unusual factors that would be something other than 2, um, 3 or 4 as a multiplier. So if you get something like 3.57, um, most likely you have to go back and check your, your calculations because there's probably something wrong. In the second part of this video, we're going to look at how to convert the empirical formula into a molecular formula using the, um, the molecular weight. So you'll notice that in the second part, it says the molecular weight of benzoic acid is 122.12 grams per mole. Calculate the molecular formula. This is the empirical formula, the C7H6O2. So now our job is to figure out what the molecular formula is, knowing that the molecular weight is 122.12 grams. So step four says, calculate the ratio between the molecular weight and the empirical formula weight. Multiply the coefficients by this ratio. So let's look at the example of glucose. We know that the glucose molecule is C6H12O6. And in this case, we're, you, we know this, we're given this, so this kind of makes it instructional because we can see that the ratio should be times 6 to go from here to there. So now the question is, is well, how could, we figure that out, how could we figure that out if we didn't know what the molecular formula actually was? Is there a way we could do it just knowing the molecular weight? And there is. So if you calculate the empirical formula weight for this, you get 30 uh, 0.0 approximately grams per mole. That would be 12.01 plus 1.008 plus 16 grams per mole. So you get about 30 grams per mole. So now the question is, is well, how do we figure out how to scale this up to get us to the 180.2 grams per mole? Well, what we would do is we would take our ratio, like it says, so we take the ratio of the molecular weight over the empirical formula weight, which in this case is going to be 180.2 grams per mole, divided by 30.0 grams per mole, and we get a factor of 6. So by, doing, by taking this ratio, 
that's going to tell us how many times we have to multiply this mass in order to get us up to the mass of 180.2 grams per mole. So um, then if we multiply the coefficients by this 6, we get C6H12O6. So that's the process, that's the process for coming up with the molecular formula from the empirical formula. You take the ratio, multiply through by the coefficients. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to calculate the empirical formula weight. And you're going to get, for the empirical formula weight, you're going to get 122.12 grams per mole. So you're probably already saying to yourself, well, gee, that's the same exact thing as the molecular weight. What does that mean? So we're going to take the ratio of the empirical weight, the molecular formula weight, divided by the empirical formula weight. So we're going to take 122.12 grams per mole, divided by 122.12 grams per mole. So in this particular case, we get a fraction of 1, which tells us that the empirical formula is, is the molecular formula. So when your empirical formula weight is the same thing as your molecular formula weight, that just simply means that you don't have to multiply, that, that means that you're multiplying through by a factor of 1, or they're the same thing. So what you would report as a final answer here would be C7H6O2. So in some cases, you will get a ratio where you'll have to multiply by through by a factor, and in other cases, your molecular formula will just be the same as the empirical formula, and it depends on what the molecular weight is relative to the empirical formula weight.